So happy to be here. Good afternoon. So happy to be here today. My name is Aaron Brown and I am out, a realtor out of San Antonio, Texas. I am here today with Regina Brown, my older sister, and uh, we are both realtors here in the area. We've got some really fun, fascinating people on the show today. We have Angela Brown from Savvy Cleaner out of Charlotte. And uh, we have Brooke as well, who's a phenomenal realtor out of Charlotte. And uh, Angela, could you introduce yourself? Yes, thank you so much. I am uh, super excited to be here with you today. And uh, one of the things that we are looking at today is we're looking at going on home tours. And I'm super excited because everybody that's ever thought about selling their home probably at some point or another has an open house. And uh, as a clean person, I say clean person, as a cleaner, house cleaner, we're really involved in the move in, move out process. And over the last 32 years, we have been involved in so many house showings. And so I've gathered a whole lot of questions for you guys. And then just to brush up on my questions and my skills, over the weekend, I went on seven open houses. And so <laughs> I put all my questions together and we're gonna cover that today. So um, I will flip this over to Brooke. And uh, Brooke, uh, welcome to the show. And uh, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself as well. Thank, thank you so much, Angela. Uh, I'm so happy to be here and excited about our topic today. I love uh, open houses primarily because I really enjoy working with home buyers, especially first time home buyers. It's kind of a passion of mine. So really excited to dive into this and hopefully be able to answer some questions for some folks. All righty. So open house 101. All right. This is exciting for me because I um have always been looking for tips and ways to maximize and streamline the home buying experience. And I see right here on the very front of this, there's a great big sign out front that says, hey, open house. And so I'm curious from the realtor's standpoint, um, first and foremost, what is the best uh, way to recognize that there's an open house going on in the neighborhood? And I will let any of the realtors that are present answer that question. Well, I'll jump in. Um so a lot of the big sign is a great way and you'll see directional signs as you're getting close to the to the home where the open house is being hosted, maybe on the corner. And a lot of uh, realtors, myself included, will put um, I used to put balloons. They're not um, as as environmentally friendly. We've come to realize so pinwheel, something like that, an, atten an attention getter onto the sign. So you're. The, the realtor hosting the open house is hopefully going to make sure you know exactly where it is through signage. And um, and then a lot of folks will have a plan of attack of the open houses they want to go see, like you, Angela, going to see seven in one day. Um, so a lot of folks will have a plan, too. But, yeah, the, the realtor should have ample signage to make sure you know right where you're going. Cool. Um, Aaron, what's your take on that? I'm curious. How do you advertise and let people know that you're having an open house for the day? So how we advertise is a little bit different than most realtors. Um, so uh, we can get into that, but definitely having the directionals in place. If there's an HOA in the neighborhood, we've contacted the HOA. We've gotten permissions on how many signs, how many directionals we can use in most H homeowner association communities. Uh, they'll only allow a certain number or none at all. Um, if there is no HOA, I'll have anywhere from 25 to 30 open house signs and directionals leading to the home. Um, and then we will plaster the front yard. <laughs> and uh, as far as the neighborhood, uh, there's been a lot of marketing that's done to the neighborhood. Every door in the neighborhood has got a personal invitation already. Um, and then there's been a ton of online advertising and our entire database knows about that open house when we do one. But in most cases, most neighborhoods, there's going to be some directionals and definitely something in the front yard showing that you have arrived at your destination. Yay, I love that. <laughs> now, Regina, you you specialize in the high-end luxury market. And so what is the difference between like just a regular neighborhood where you're going to have regular homes and a luxury event where maybe it's off the beaten path or something like that? How would you advertise? Well, we go to the neighborhood Facebook groups and we post there because most people are very active on their neighborhood Facebook groups. Uh, we also get with the HOA and we 
call ourselves the Party Squad. Oh, wow. So with the HOA's permission, we make fabulous welcome flyers. And with the HOA's permission, we party with them. And we go literally knock on each door. Most people have a ring doorbell. And we will verbally invite them. Oh, wow. And have a, a flyer that we will leave usually under a little rock or something so it doesn't leave any damage. And we invite them to come to to our, our party. So we host them, we host block parties because most neighborhoods don't allow solicitation. Uh -huh. So we, we personally just have a very different approach in the luxury market. So it's kind of like by invite only then, like you're not well, letting anybody that's probably not semi qualified to your party. Well, for those luxury buyers, because when you hand a knock on those doors, you'll have an elderly, couple answer the door in a huge two-story home and clearly they probably need to downsize at some point uh -huh. and so they might not come to that open house but it gives us the opportunity to actually talk with them and let them know what's available in the neighborhood mm -hmm. other one stories if they want to stay there so it gives us a lot better understanding of what's going on in the neighborhood and they might want to sell and hadn't thought about it yet mm -hmm. so so does that give you some ammunition for, let's say that you are hosting the open house, it's a luxury estate, and then you've talked to several of the neighbors that are there, and then um, you are aware that there's a couple that might be thinking about selling, they haven't actually listed yet. You have somebody that comes to the, the showing and they say, well, this isn't quite what I'm looking for. And you say, well, if you like this neighborhood, I have an inside on another home that may be on the market in the next few days. Would you like me to keep you posted on, on that? Is that, is that, am I on the right absolutely and that's where that's why we work together so well is one will do the list side one will do the buy side and it's a very smooth transaction to make sure that they can stay in that neighborhood if they want and that was one of my questions because you can't be the realtor for both the buyer and the seller correct you can is that a conflict of interest or how does that work um it's called intermediary and and if it's agreed upon it's doable um in the interest of the client we will usually get them with another realtor just so we can give our full fiduciary to that client. Uh -huh. And there's no, there's no conflict of interest, but so it, it, it's absolutely you, cool if it's agreed upon. So you could be a buyer and a seller for anybody, but typically it's not for the same client at the, on the same house purchase. Is that right? And you're saying that's when you get the other person involved just for the best interest of the buyer. Correct. The mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Okay. Is that also how it works where you are, Brooke? It's called dual agency where I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, in this area. You can, I can represent in the same transaction, the buyer and the seller. Um, I, I have done it. The preference is to assign uh, the, one of the clients to another realtor within our firm. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. And that way you can give a hundred percent of your attention to the one client instead of splitting it between the two. Right. And, you, you know, you go out with the intention of doing your very best for each of those clients, but it, it's, it's just cleaner transaction if you can have another realtor involved with you. And um, like Aaron said, uh, it, it has to be agreed upon. Both clients have to know that you're representing both sides of that transaction. So there are mm -hmm. certain tra transactions where it might not be uh, much of an issue, but and as a matter of course, it's better to have a separate agent on each side of the transaction. Very cool. Thank you for explaining that. I know that um, as I as I was out house shopping this last week, um, lots of questions came up, and I was just I was curious about that. Um, one of them is uh, we talked about how to find open houses, and I know uh, Regina talked about um, having the social media end of things, and I guess that would be the social media over here in the corner. Um, I'm curious to know how many people use websites like uh, Zillow or Redfin or some of those others to um, to help find some of the um, listings or how does that work? Do you use any of those major sites, realtor.com or I, I don't know yeah, what they all are. So it, it, imagine it's the same in Texas, but here our multiple listing service, if I have uh, a listing and I'm hosting an open house, it's going to post. It's an internet, uh, it's a data exchange, information data exchange. So it's going to post on 
Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, Realtor.com. So it's going to, uh, to, to post to all of those websites that um, the people use to look for open houses. So because I didn't know, and this was one of the questions that I had, you know, do you just drive through the neighborhood looking for signs or, or what have you? And I know that uh, we were in the Villages, Florida this last week. And so the Villages has their own app for this retirement, when I say retirement community, it's an active adult uh, community and they have their own app. So we went on the app, we signed up for the app. And then once we downloaded the app, then it was able to show all of the places for sale as well as all of the open houses that week. And then by clicking on a home, then we were able to open up, it was kind of like a little version of what you might find on a real estate website, but then it would have like the price of the home and pictures of the home. And then it had some really great ads, like that was like a little description of the home. And some of them were just really crappy ads. <laughs> and then it would show like a little map thing and you would click on the map thing. And then it, based on where you were, it would give you directions to the, the open house. And so then it had the hours that were listed. So it'd be like, this is open from two to four or whatever. We're like, oh, it's 3.30. We can still make this one because it's nearby. So do you guys take advantage of, of apps like that that are in the areas that you're, you're um, listing in? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, here we have the Nextdoor app. We have Facebook groups. Um, for most communities, they'll have a community group. Um, and then websites and apps like Zillow and Realtor. Uh -huh. um, you simply click on the filter button and scroll down and select open houses. It will show you all of the open houses that are happening today and this week um, in any given area. And all you have to do is zoom in on the map and it will show you for this neighborhood. These are the homes that will be open this week. These are the times. So pretty easy ways to find open houses. And can you also search by a particular type? Like let's say that we were downsizing and I was looking for a ranch style that didn't have stairs that go up and down. Do you have, or is there a way to search for like just one story only? Well, they, yeah, on all of those websites under the filter option, you just select one story, your price range, open houses for the weekend, and it'll populate those for you. Um, you can cruise out and see them during the open house times. Absolutely. Okay. The awesome. only thing with caution is while using those apps, um, the way Realtor, Zillow, these types of apps work is realtors pay for zip codes to be advertised in those zip codes. And so oftentimes when you click on a home, it'll say contact a realtor to get more information. Um, they, those websites sell your information at, because they're marketing companies. And so if you're just looking for open houses and you're wanting to get in touch with that realtor, I would suggest not filling out the form um, or your phone is going to blow up for days or weeks. <laughs> um, with marketing companies from all over the place. And most of the time, it's not actually the realtor representing that particular property. It's uh, someone who's representing the zip code. So. Okay. Good to know. I appreciate knowing that. Thanks for explaining that. Um, all right. So uh, what price of home should you view? Now, this is a great question for me because we were looking at homes, not really knowing, like we hadn't, we, we talked on another one of your shows about having um, a pre-approval. And we did not have pre-approval when we went on the open houses this last week. And so we didn't really know what price of home we should be looking in. How do you determine if you haven't done a pre-approval and you're just, do you just go look at everything under the sun? Or do you say, well, this is kind of what's similar to the house we live in? Or how do you make that determination? That's a, open houses, it's a, that's different than just, scheduling time with your realtor to go out and look at homes that you are really thinking about purchasing open houses. Uh, it's a, they're a great opportunity for realtors to start to develop relationships with potential clients for you to meet other realtors um, to see if there's somebody that you kind of click with. It's a great way for you to learn about different areas to learn about um, the different types of amenities that you see in the different price points of homes. So it's, uh, and for a lot of people, it's just, it's a hobby to go out and look at, at open houses, whether they're um, imminently thinking to buy or not. So it's a different animal than just going to look at homes. And then also uh, I, I've worked several open houses where I'll partner with a lender. There could be a lender at the open house you're going to see, which is another good opportunity to start a conversation with a lender to see, 
hey, we're looking to buy in the next six months. Can we talk about um, what you need to get us pre-approved? So it, it could be a good tool for you to meet someone like that as well. Got it. Um, thanks for explaining that. And, and Regina, I'm curious from you, do you have people that show up to like a $3 million house and they're really only in the $1 million budget? And is that bad if they show up like, and you, they're totally not qualified for it? Do you frown upon that? Like they, I was invited, so I showed up to your party thing? No, I never frown upon it at all, ever. Uh, it's it's frustrating for the client if you're looking for something that far above your price range. Mm -hmm. um, I I just walked in from a showing with a client who did this exact thing. Yeah. She was looking at homes about three times more than what she qualifies for. And so the homes that we were looking at today were wonderful homes. They were very nice homes and they it's still luxury home but it's so far below the price range that she's been looking that she was just distraught. Uh -huh. And so that's unfortunate because even though you end up with a really great home, if it's three times more than what you qualify for, uh -huh. nothing's going to compare. So I always encourage people to get with a lender and find out what your budget is and then look within your budget and find a great home within your budget. That's, and, and just a quick note on that, um, definitely agree with, with what both of you know, these girls have said. Um, a good rule of thumb is don't exceed one third of your income when you're purchasing a home. And so if you don't wanna to talk to a lender and you're just wanting to go look and you want a general price range, um, equal to one third of your income would, would be pretty standard. Um, and then also, you know, why are you going up? Are you going out to get home ideas, things that you want to improve upon? It's fun to go look at luxury homes. It's fun to go look at other things. If you just let the realtor know when you get there, hey, this one's out of my price range, but I really wanted to come see what a $3 million house looks like, you know, um, or a hundred, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the price range is. Um, at least the realtor knows up front, they can let you go explore the home and uh, it takes all the pressure off for, for you walking into the house off the street. That's a really good point. And I, I think authenticity and openness is the key there. When you come in and you say, hey, this isn't in my budget, which is kind of an authentic move to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I am on a budget. Here's kind of what I'm looking at. And then also explaining, I'm not in the market to buy this year, but probably in the next year or so. At least that's not going to make them feel like, hey, you know, lock down the lock down the doors because I'm I'm here to buy today, right? I think it's yeah, and you're you're starting that relationship. So <laughs> if this isn't the home for you, then let's talk about what is and let's put a plan together to try and make that happen. Cool. Is is an open house a good place to pick up clients um, for a realtor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so it's it's cool then to go in and make small talk and say, hey, I'm looking for a realtor. I don't have one and I'm open. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so my next question then, is it okay just to show up to an open house or do I need an appointment when I show up? Like, is it frowned upon if I just show up like, hey, no one was expecting me and ta-da, here I am. Come <laughs> one, come all. Walk That's right. in, welcome. Oh yeah? <laughs> yes. Uh, a quick note on that, uh, if you're having a successful open house, there's usually quite a few people already there. Um, we invite people to come in. We'll usually have a sign on the door that says, welcome, come on in. Um, we expect people to come in and not have to stand outside. The more the merrier for us. Um, we do engage people pretty heavily in terms of conversation. And so if we're having a conversation, and somebody standing at the doorbell ringing it, we're not going to go answer the door. We're going to continue our conversation. The person in front of us is the most important person in our world. And so somebody can come in or wait outside, that's up to them. Um, but if they read the sign on the door, they'll come on in and start looking at the home. And when we're done with the conversation, we'll happily go meet them. And that comes back to another question that I had because as we went home shopping over the weekend in order to, to kind of do some research for today's time together, um, we showed up at a house and there were a lot of cars out front. And so I assumed there were a lot of people inside and there were no signs that said, come on in, you know, make yourself at home. There was nothing like that. There were just a whole bunch of cars. And I'm thinking, is this the open house 
all these people are here and do I ring the doorbell or do I just walk in or what is the protocol? Because I'm assuming that there are a lot of people here. Do I stand outside and wait until some people come out? You know what I mean? Like I didn't have an appointment. I was just showing up. I was unannounced and then I, I didn't know what to do. So what, what, what is the protocol? What do you do? I too have a sign on the door that says uh, open house, please come in. Um, like, like Aaron was saying, hopefully you're engaged in conversation with someone else. So you try and eliminate that question of, uh, of your, of your open home visitors at the door. So I have a sign on my door, please come on in so that you don't have to worry about, do I ring the bell? What do I do in case I'm not there to greet you? We usually have several signs in the front yard up the sidewalk that say, welcome. Um, we have QR codes for people to scan, get information on the home, a welcome in on the door, uh, several open house sign banners in the yard, usually a large tent with chairs <laughs> and shade and uh, coolers mm. and food. And there's no way. Wait, you can wait, just... wait. I'm coming to your open house. <laughs> <laughs> we, we definitely need another show just to talk about how we do open houses for sure. <laughs> we, we've, we've actually done hundreds of open houses and they've evolved over the years. So we love we love doing open houses. Um, so I actually saw one of your open houses advertised on Facebook. And I was so enamored because it seemed like there was like a food cart out front where there was food being served. And I was like, OMG, I think I should show up and get me some food. Is that food only for the people that go through the house or is that food for everybody that walks by? Is this like a neighborhood block party? Like, I'm, I'm curious about that. It's it's open. In fact, we've, we've had contracting crews show up and uh, we've, we've actually been able to exchange business from that. And so oh, wow. everyone's welcome. Angela, I request that we get to do a house just on open houses. Oh, a show just on open houses. <laughs> that would be so much fun. That would we be could so talk for an hour just on the fun of open houses. <laughs> on on how to stage them. Um, can we can we do that next week since we're talking about open houses right now? And right. I know that there's a lot of interest. And I know that we're approaching that time of year where lots of people are selling their homes because it's spring and people are trying to move in before this the school season. Is that is that something we could talk about? Because I know there are a lot of realtors that... that that we probably could always could talk use, about it. Mm -hmm. Of course. That probably could use that tip. Um, so Regina, I got a question for you. Because your open houses are invite only, um, and you're doing the party club thing, like, hey, you're part of the VIP group. Um, are, are people carded when they show up? Like, hey, here's my invite. I personally had an invite, or do you just? No, and it's not. It's not invitation only. It's just specifically for those luxury communities where they're gated. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's normally people have family members they would love to move into these areas and those there aren't usually a lot of homes for sale um and so they're open to to everyone it's just we hand deliver invitations to those specific gated communities and no one else in the community outside of the community is really going to go because it's gated and the hoa is not going to allow you know access through that gate usually unless you've got permission and the guard is there and the IDs everyone and those kinds of things. So uh, those are all definitely a lot more exclusive. Got it. And normally the people want to choose their neighbors. And so they're waiting for a home to come available. So their mother or their siblings or an auntie can move into the area. And so normally it's family members who refer someone, someone else to come move in. So, um so choose your neighbors. That just gave me a really uh, awesome idea. Like, what if you were to go round up the neighbors and say, hey, we have an open house. Why don't you guys come over and pick out your new neighbors? And then have like the neighbors show up and, hey, we pick you guys to be our new neighbors. Why don't you guys move in? <laughs> and then third party endorsement, let the neighbors that have showed up explain how great the neighborhood is and how quiet we, it is at a certain we have, day. We have done that countless times. We'll, yeah. we've actually, um, we'll usually try to find the most active person on social media in a neighborhood and specifically give them incentive to come out and hang out at the house. Uh, and they will talk nonstop about the neighborhood. And so we usually park them out front um, under the shade on a lawn chair and make sure they're amply fed. Maybe a margarita or two. Just <laughs> possibly. And they, they will entertain all day long. They are the best salesmen for the neighborhoods. You get some good, happy neighbors and they will sit there, we feed them. 
And no matter who comes through, they will talk that neighborhood up and talk about all of the fun and activities and everything that the neighborhood provides. And people love coming and sitting and meeting their neighbors. Yeah, and it gives a great sense of belonging and community right off the bat. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you can find somebody who's been in the neighborhood a long time. Yeah. They seem to know a lot of the people. And um, we try to target people that are on HOA boards um, and have some presence in the community. And they love to just come hang out all, all afternoon. Well, and that was interesting for me because um, even though I am not buying a house right now in the Villages, Florida, one of the questions that I always ask when looking at a new home is how quiet is the area? Because as a YouTuber, I could be filming at any time of the day or night. And I want to know just off the top of my head, are there are there ambulances that fly through the area? You know, like if I lived in the Bronx or something, there's a constant noise and trains going by and there are ambulances and people laughing and talking at all hours of the day. And is this is this a semi-quiet neighborhood where I could get work done? Or is it am I going to be constantly competing with things? And now in my neighborhood where I live right now, the competition is with the landscaping companies because the landscaping companies will come through and they do everybody's yards. But now I know that that's on Wednesday. And so I can reduce my Wednesday filming to a different time of the day when all the landscape trucks are not coming through. They're traditionally on Wednesday unless there's bad weather. And that's really helpful for me to know because if I thought, oh, look how quiet this neighborhood is. And then every day I've got blowers and you know, machines going back and forth and it, it then stops you to a grinding halt until everybody's done with their work for the day for you to then start recording. And I know that's, yeah, that's a weird... A, that's, no, it's a great tip. But for you, it's a quiet neighborhood. For somebody else, it might be a very active neighborhood. And so it's a great tip for people to go and look at that neighborhood. You may fall in love with the open house home on a Saturday morning, but go look at it at different times of the day and get a feel for it then if, if w whether you're looking for a quiet neighborhood or a really highly active neighborhood and if there's a community clubhouse with a pool and uh, amenities like that go and see how well used they are see how active it is that's a great tip quick note on that is most realtors can provide a neighborhood report that gives the basic demographics of the neighborhood with some psychographic information and so you get an idea of more or less the age group and people that live in the area. Um, and you can get a little bit of a feel of how that would feel to you living in that neighborhood based on that information. Well, I had an open house. Um, sorry, Angela. I had an open no, no, no. house that uh, met my clients at the open house. They were a young couple with two young children. Some of the neighbors came out to the open house and years later, those older neighbors have been babysitters and and kind of surrogate grandparents to um, to that young family. So that getting to know that community is going to have a huge impact on your use and enjoyment of the home. Uh, one of the things that I noticed while we were out shopping this this last week, and I say shopping, we weren't actually going to buy a place. I was I was just looking. But while we were out looking, and again, it's the Villages, Florida, one of the things that my husband and I both became keenly aware of is they were not selling the homes as much as they were selling the lifestyle. And so everywhere we went, the homes were kind of small. And I say small because it would be a downsize from what we live in now. They weren't two-story homes. They were mostly one-story homes. And they were home story, uh, they were story smaller homes that would be kind of like something that an active 55-plus person would live in as kind of their last final home. And one of the things that we noticed is when we walked in, we're like, hey, tell us about what's going on here. And instead of them saying, well, the home is so many square foot and it has, you know, two bathrooms, three bedrooms and the features of the home. They were saying, oh, this neighborhood has active walking trails and has bicycle trails and it has bocce ball and it has 80 swimming pools and it has nine golf, you know, golf courses. And they were highlighting the environment. And then the community has all these different um I don't even know what you call them, but they're like little town centers where they have uh, like card games and they have a quilting club and they have book clubs and they have Bible clubs and they have a music club and then a barbershop quartet and they have uh, entertainment every night in the square on three different squares in this area. And so they were highlighting all these. I mean, by the time I left, I was like, oh, this is like the coolest place on earth. Mm -hmm. And it really had very little to do with the actual house itself. And I realized as I was leaving each of these places, these people are not selling the homes because these are average homes. 
but they're selling the lifestyle of what this looks like when you settle down and you're done working, you know, 80 hour weeks and you want to just kind of kick back and then have some fun because you deserve it kind of a lifestyle. Well, the way we use our homes has changed drastically over the past couple of years specifically, but um, the past several years, more and more people working from home, doing homeschooling. And in the area where I work in and around Charlotte, we have lots of 55 and plus active community neighborhoods popping up, but even uh, other neighborhoods are really centered on live, work, play. Mm -hmm. So lifestyle is a huge focus now. Um, of course, home amenities, you want to have a home that you really like and enjoy, but lifestyle is really very much impactful uh, on the home that people are choosing. And most of that information is so readily available. Um, they've already pulled up on the app, the size of home, square footage, when it was built, built or all those basic things. Right. And so a lot of it really is about the lifestyle. Um, th the exceptions to that, I guess, is when you get into the luxury market and people want a little more specifics. Um, but again, as realtors, we usually share about 20% of what we know um, on, on any given home or area. Um, and try to let our clients do most of the talking. So it's a very, it's very easy. We love what we do. So it's very easy to, to share far too much information. <laughs> so normally if you step back and let people actually ask questions to what they're curious about, everyone is curious about something completely different, totally um. different. So a lot of, some people want lots of statistics and we can give them other people don't care at all. They just want the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. So it's very important as the consumer to ask your realtor the questions that you're curious about because everyone is so different. Well, and not knowing what the questions were because we weren't actually going to buy a house this last weekend, but um, we went into some really nice homes and then we went into a couple, I'm going to say crappy homes and they were crappy because the neighborhood wasn't all that great. And the homes were like, okay, they weren't great or anything. So I was asking like, hey, the homes are really expensive right now and the interest rates are really high. This is kind of a crappy home. Is it less money than these other really nice houses? And they're like, nope, they're not. They're all the same, you know, the same price. They're all in the same price range. And so it's a crappier neighborhood, but the price is still high. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, and they're like, but you still get all the walking trails and you get all the pools and you get all the, you know, you get all the amenities. So yay, you pay the full price. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe go next weekend and see if the price is adjusted. One thing that I did notice on the open house, and it was not a question I would have ever thought to ask, but one of the things one of the realtors threw at me is if you buy this house right now, like right now, if we, if we make a deal right now, there's no bond on this house. And I said, well, what is a bond? And I guess when the neighborhood was built, there was like some kind of a bond that replaced the homeowners association dues, where you ended up paying like $3,000 a year to pay for all these amenities and the walking trails and the landscaping and all this stuff. And it was rolled over into a 30 year mortgage. And I guess because some of the homes have been there now for 30 years, that bond has uh, achieved or accelerated or whatever. It's like over. And so they're like no bond. And I'm like, what what what, how, what does that mean? They said no homeless, homeowners association dues. There's just no bond for you if you buy this house. And then I started. I mean, now I started looking at homes. I'm like, well, I want a house with no bond <laughs> because I didn't. You know, I mean, I if you're gonna if you're gonna buy, why well, pay an extra three thousand dollars a year, which I guess is the equivalent of a of a homeowners association dues. So. Well, there's a there's a neighborhood kind of near us. It's um, across the border into South Carolina, and they had uh, they had a bond. I think it was a 15 year bond on that property, but it was because of um, some improvements that the land needed. So, um, yeah, that's something that you know, if you're buying a home and it's got a bond on it, it'll be disclosed to you. And yeah, now is that part of your closing costs then, or is that rolled over into the the price it, of the mortgage? It, it was it was paid monthly. Okay. It was paid monthly. It was not part. I mean. Um, I imagine it could have been rolled into closing costs, but, but no, this was a, this was a monthly cost. It was pretty yeah, significant wow. for 15 years. Wow. All right. So I have another question and this was a question that I ran into when you go into the house as the um, person that's checking out, you're not the realtor, you're the person checking out the house. Are you supposed to go up and introduce yourself to the realtor or do you just walk in and like pretend like the realtor is not there? Do you go say hi to them? 
how, what, how does that interchange? Like what, what's supposed to happen there? What is the protocol? I'll jump in on this one. Absolutely. Always go introduce yourself for sure. Always go introduce yourself. And if you have representation, if you have a realtor that you are over the moon about and happy with, let them know right up front that you have representation, that you have a realtor that you love and you're working with. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, let them know that as well. Let them know. Usually there's something to sign in, whether it's a QR code or everyone does that differently. But mm -hmm. normally they get your information. And as the representing realtor, we need, for safety reasons, we need to know who's in the home. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times the, the home seller has asked, I mean, they don't just want random people walking through their home. Sure. And so we need normally their contact information, their name, phone number, and email address. And if they have any questions, there's a way for us to contact them and share photos or share information, seller's disclosures, whatever it is that they're interested in. And if that's not particularly the right house for them, they can let us know what it is that they're wanting. And normally we have, a, we know everything that's on the market in that neighborhood. And so right. that house, but it might be three doors down. So very, very important to introduce yourself and at least let the agent know, because what that's going to do is it's going to make it a lot more pleasant experience for you also. Mm -hmm. Instead of some stranger awkwardly following you around the house asking you questions, <laughs> you get it out of the way right away. Hey, I'm Regina. I'm in the market in this particular neighborhood. This is what I'm looking for. I have representation. Uh, I just drove by and saw your signs and wanted to come check the house out. How does a realtor feel about that when you show up and you're like, I already have representation. Like, I don't choose you, but, you know, I'm, I'm just looking. How, how do they feel about that? It, it, well, the realtor should be there um, representing the seller of the home. And if you do meet clients who don't have an agent, they're not represented, that's great if you can establish that relationship. But it's expected that um, that you're going to have clients come in who already have a realtor or some of them may come with their realtor. Oh, wow. So the, yeah, so yeah, that's fine. Um, I know that when we were out shopping this last weekend, um, I, we went into a house and there were two realtors. They both had name badges on and they were standing in the kitchen and they were like facing each other, chit chatting. And we walked in and they didn't stop and say hello, welcome or anything. They just kept talking to each other and just completely ignored us. And they I didn't feel like one of them was a client because they were both wearing name badges from the same company. I felt like they were co-workers or something. And I know they were involved in a deep conversation, but I think they took that thing Aaron said to heart about, you know, the person in front of me is the most important person <laughs> in the world. And so we were like, well, do we just like walk in and like help ourselves and look around or do we wait to introduce ourselves? So there was kind of like this awkward moment of, and we just kind of stood there in the door kind of like, <laughs> not really knowing what the protocol was. And I was hoping at some point they would like stop the conversation. And go, oh, you've arrived. Hello. Come on in, you know, or something like that. And it never happened. Yeah, that's so too bad. We were, we were kind of like just walking in, like we're looking around like, OK, so this just happened. But it was weird and awkward. So I thought I'd ask the question, like, am I supposed to introduce myself and interrupt their conversation or do I wait for a, an opening to jump in? Yeah, I've, I've been to a lot of other people's open houses over the years, um, not only for for research, but also looking for clients. And um, I can't tell you how many open houses I've walked in and had that same kind of reception where a realtor is sitting in the corner on their phone. They don't look up, they're not engaging. Um, I Often I wonder why they're there. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate when realtors are that way. Um, our job as a realtor is to present someone's house and help sell it. That's why we're there. And so our job is to engage with you, answer any questions you might have, and do that in the most unobtrusive way, uh, but also see if there is a way that we can help you with the house that we're standing in. And real and estate is just like any other business. You're going to have some realtors who are just dynamite, like you're going to have some um, house cleaners who are dynamite, and you're going to have some that just... Uh, not somebody that you'd want to work with. So that's or earlier. I said, going to open houses might give you a good opportunity to meet a realtor that you do connect with or see the kind of realtor that you wouldn't want to work with. Well, I have to tell you, since you brought that up, I have to tell you about Mary cook. All right. So we go into this house in the villages 
And this lady pops up out of her chair. She's sitting out in the back Lanai area. She pops up and she said, oh, I'm so glad you came. I've been waiting for you. And we were like, whoa, she's waiting for us. <laughs> and we were the only person there. So we're like, how did she know we were coming? So she jumps up and she goes, I'm Mary. And I would love to take you on a tour of this house. She goes, the people that live here are the coolest people. And we were like, whoa, well, I'm sorry that they're moving. You know what I mean? And she gave us this amazing tour of the home. And she was engaging and she was very interesting. And she'd written a book. I actually bought the copy of the book that she she shared with me. Oh, well, that's all in my book. I was like, what? You wrote a book, a realtor that wrote a book? So then I, I bought her book right there on Amazon. When I got ready to leave, she gave me her card. And she said, listen, I have been in this area for 23 years. I love this area. And I love selling homes in this area. Will you do me the courtesy of keeping my card with you at least for the rest of the day? And if you get thinking during the day about another house, look at my card and remember that I've been here for 23 years and I can probably answer any question about any house on any street. And I said, okay. Then I go to the next house and they say, are you working with anybody? And I'm like, well, I got this card in the back of my pocket from Mary Cook. <laughs> and they're like, oh, Mary Cook. And then they're kind of like, yeah, Mary's got you covered. She's got everybody covered. And I was sitting there thinking to myself of the experiences that we had, the people that ignored us. And then the people like Mary Cook that was like, hey, I've been waiting for you to arrive of, of my choice. Like just if I were to draw a name out of a hat, I would pick Mary Cook. And what's really weird, Mary doesn't know this, but I'm telling you about it right now on YouTube, right? On this podcast, because she was so good at what she did. And I was just really impressed with her finesse and her style and her charisma. So, it's a fantastic yeah. story. Go, Mary. Proud to be a realtor. Go, we Mary. Should, we Go should Mary. all try to be Mary Cook. Yeah. I, I have a happy bell. This is for Mary Cook. <laughs> It's Mary in the Villages. If you're in the Villages, Florida, look up Mary Cook. Hey, Mary. All righty. So um, I have another question, and this came up during the weekend while we were out and about. Um, is it a good idea to have good cop, bad cop? And that's where my husband and I were asking each other, um, do you like the house? Oh, yes, you like the house, and I'll not like the house. And that way it doesn't <laughs> oversell us so that we, we get too much of a high-pressured sales pitch. Um, is it is it good or bad to play good cop, bad cop? Like, what's what's the philosophy on that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I could speak to that, absolutely. Um, when it comes to someone's buying needs and wants, our job is to try to help you through those obstacles and what what really is in your best interest. We are not trying to sell you on something that you don't want. In fact, we're not trying to sell you at all. Yeah. My to help you get to your destination in the safest way possible uh -huh. uh, with using the least amount of resource for you. Mm -hmm. And so if you come in good cop, bad cop, um, all it's going to do is hurt the process for you. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, again, I'm not, I'm not going to try to sell you on this house. Mm -hmm. What is going on in your lifestyle? What's the proximity to work? What's going on with your family? Do you want to be close to relatives? Um, there's a lot of questions that I need to know to figure out what is in your best interest and how best I can help you. It's mm -hmm. not, um, hey, let me try to sell you on, on this home because this house is for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, if this home works for you and your lifestyle, I would love to help you get it and I can help you get it. If it's not, we can help you with the right solution and help you get something that works best for you. The house sells itself. Like our job isn't to talk you into buying a house. All of the things that he just said. I mean, there's no there's no reason under the sun to play good cop, bad cop. Because no, if you're and if you feel like you are being sold, that you, you might need to take a look at that relationship. Yes. I, I liken it a lot to uh, doctors. Um, if you go to a doctor and you're just, you know, you've gone to the office a few times and the staff doesn't seem very friendly, your doctor doesn't have good bedside manner, um, there's nothing to say that you have to go back to that doctor. Yeah. Maybe choose a different one that you resonate better with. Is he hearing you? Is he answering your questions? Do you resonate well together? Um, something that Regina and I have found um, working together is, 
Um, oftentimes we'll have a client that just doesn't, you know, get along or, or the, the report just isn't there with one of us, uh, but they get along really well with the other person. Mm. And so um, w- one of us will just step back and say, hey, that, that's totally okay. Um, let's see if you work better with someone else. And I can't tell you the amount of clients that we have just, uh, that didn't get along with either one of our personalities. And we, we cut those people very quickly. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's, that's huge. It's yeah. go with your gut. Yeah, it needs it's to be a good working relationship. I mean, this is a really huge financial purchase and you need to be working with somebody that you feel good about and you feel like you can trust and connect with and communicate well. I'm going to throw a monkey wrench at you because um, we did play good cup, bad cup this whole weekend and it wasn't to screw with the realtor as much as it was to me to find out where my husband was in the buying process, Mm -hmm. because I know for a fact he wants to retire in the villages. Okay. On, on numerous occasions, he's mentioned that he's taken me to the villages at least a dozen times over the last 10 years to look for homes. And we've gone and looked at homes every time we've gone. And so before we got out of the car, I said, how interested on a scale of one to 10 are you in closing on a house today? If I was in a position today to buy a house, are you willing to sit down and start the process today? And I wanted to find out because if I get inside and he starts showing all of these buying signals, if we're not going to buy today and they close at five, I don't want to keep somebody there till seven to screw around with the realtor because he's really interested. I really want to know if you're not going to buy today. I need to give buying signals that are like, hey, we're just looking and I need to be the bad cop that kind of backs us out of there so that we can let people get home at a reasonable hour. Well, and, and piggybacking on that, not necessarily with your time frame, but when you started this conversation, you said good cop, bad cop, how you feel about the house. And very often people go into a home buying situation and it becomes very emotional. They mm-hmm. have an, they fall in love with the house. And so it is good to have that back and forth of, yeah, that's great. But what about this? Right. So you, to have that well, back and forth, if it's with somebody that you're, that you're home shopping with, or if it's just, um, you know, a set of criteria that you have in mind for a house that, you know, you're not just making an emotional decision that you're making a a pragmatic decision as well. So here's an example. Um, If I move my camera here, you can see that the screen behind me is actually a screen. It's not a green screen. It's an actual 10 foot by eight foot screen. And so as we've gone looking for homes, um, I need a flat wall that is 10 feet by eight feet, at least if I'm gonna put my screens behind me for my filming. And so as we were going into homes, Pat, my husband would say, oh, look, there's a wall that would fit your big backdrops. And the realtor's like, backdrops? Tell me about the backdrops. Well, that to me is a buying signal, right? And so then I I would have to say, um, so thank you for bringing that up. I'll keep that in mind. But I'm like trying to, if we're not going to close today, don't keep giving clues that, oh, yes, this will fit my backdrop. And oh, yes, I can put my cameras over here. The light will come in through that window. You know what I mean? Don't, Don't sell me on it if you're not, in fact, going to try to buy it today, because I can turn around and I can I can sell myself all day on it if if today's the right day. And so I was I was just curious to know how the realtor feels about that, because my focus was none of these people know us. And except for Mary Cook, I'm not sure that I would (laughs) just jump in and have any of them be my realtor. I don't want to give them a bunch of buying signals because, I mean, it's an open house, right? They're there. They're there to sell a house. And I don't want to make them think, oh, look, we've got a hot lead or something. If I'm not, in fact, a hot lead, I'm, I'm just here for the weekend. And then I'm flying back and I'm going to go work for another five years or whatever. You know what I mean? To, to piggyback on that just a little bit, I would say that um, if you are planning to move to the villages at some point, uh, to, to let the realtor know that, hey, you know, I'm not going to retire for, you know, another five years. We're kind of thinking about the villages down the road. Um, what would be important to the realtor to know is what you do and what Mm -hmm. makes sense for you long-term because clearly it won't be that home, Mm -hmm. but they'll know in in five or six years from now uh, the type of things that would meet your lifestyle needs. And as they're out doing real estate and interacting with people in homes, 
around that time frame, they can start looking for you and they'll know more specifically what you want. Um, these relationships are very long term in mm -hmm. real estate and we go very, very deep with our clients. And so we only work with people that we would enjoy hanging out with and being friends with uh, because we get really personal about their finances, their families, their kids, their relationships, uh, what they're going through, um, you know. And so, again, it's, it's not just about the house. It's about the lifestyle. And that's all inclusive of your lifestyle. Um, and so, again, it's finding that realtor that you can really click with where you're like, yes, I could be friends with this person for the next 10 years. Um, I know that I could work with Mary in 10 years from now. Uh -huh. and the more you interact with Mary over time, by the time you get out to the villages, she will have the best location in the villages with the best home mm -hmm. ready for you that will meet all of your lifestyle needs. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times we've had this exact same thing happen with clients. Mm -hmm. Your situation, I'm years away. That's lovely. I want your dream list. What does that look like to you? Well, this doesn't exist. And we say, you're right. It doesn't exist today but you're not looking for five years. You don't retire mm -hmm. for five years. And we stumble upon, we're in many, many homes every day. Mm -hmm. Many times we've stumbled upon exactly what they're looking for, maybe 18 months later. Mm -hmm. I'll call them and we'll say, meet us at this house. But I told you it's three and a half years from now. That's mm -hmm. totally fine, please come see it. And they go, oh my God, this is exactly what we mm -hmm. want. It's all of our needs. But we're not retiring for three and a half years. Perfect. They've purchased the home and they've turned it into an Airbnb mm -hmm. turned it into a rental. They've turned it into something that's now producing income for them. And they've got three and a half years left, but it's the prime location. It's the mm. home, everything that they want. And you so know, it's, it's funny that you bring that up because that's how we bought our first home. We were driving through neighborhoods and we found this home and we loved the home. We loved the neighborhood and it was being built and they didn't have any more lots available at the end. And so we went looking at other developments that they were also doing. And uh, the people, the, we kept watching this one house being built. It had all the features, all the bells, all the whistles, everything that we wanted at the perfect location. And we got a call one day, and this is right before we were married. We were about six months before we were married. And uh, we weren't gonna buy a house till after we were married, we were just looking. And we would use our dating time to go look at homes, which is crazy, but anyway. Um, they called us and they said, the financing fell through for the house that you love on the street that you love. Do you want the house? But you have to decide right now. And they, then they threw in a, 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 what do you call it? A, a bonus, if you will. They said they've already paid like $60,000 toward the house that would come off the purchase price. They will roll it over. These people don't get it back. Do you want it? But you got to come buy it if you want it. And we were like, do we want it? Yeah, we want it. And we, we bought it like literally right then. We're like, yes, let's buy it. And then uh, there were a couple of things that we wanted to do differently because they had vinyl flooring throughout the whole house, which is weird. And they painted the walls yellow. And so yellow walls, pink vinyl flooring, which was weird to me. And so I wanted to put ceramic tile in and I wanted to paint the walls a neutral color. And so I did all the home repairs then before we moved in. Nice. And by the time we got married, we had our dream home in the neighborhood that we wanted and $60,000 off the price. I was nice. like, a booyah. And so we did that exact same thing when we were like six months from being married. People were like, you're buying a house and you're not even married yet. We're like, I, I was like, I'm totally going to move in. Pat can stay in his condo. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to move in. This is my house for six months. I'll, you know, and I the said, water, oh, no. right. Yes. Yeah, it was really awesome. You know, what's cute is you and Pat are still looking at houses on your date time. Yes. Just in, Flor just in Florida now. <laughs> you know, How many years? Yeah. Just in Florida. Uh, we celebrated our 21st wedding anniversary, actually, while we were in the villages, looking at houses. Wow. Yeah, Congrats. Congrats. I wish, I, right. I, wish I had a happy bell. There's the happy <laughs> bell right there. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, if I could do it all over again, I would marry him again in a heartbeat. He was the best decision that I ever made. Yeah. And if you can go house shopping with the best person, the best friend that you've ever had, I say do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It should feel good. It, it should feel good. Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing is, and this is where I, I asked the question about how much do you do you do good cop bad cop because um 
And the realtors were very accommodating and they would ask us questions like, you know, what do you do for a living? And Pat said, oh, she runs her own company. She can work anywhere. We don't say that because, you know, <laughs> and he kept giving all the wrong signals. Oh, she just needs a place where her office is. She can she can clean in any room of the house. It doesn't matter how big or how small. I'm like, Shh, don't, 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 you know. And then uh, we got into the cleaning thing because he told everybody that I clean, right? Oh, she runs a cleaning company. And then they were like, oh, well, these people have this, you know, and they would we would talk clean or whatever and there was um there was one particular house the house and i, I was going to ask about the cleaning because there was one particular house it was so dirty it was so dirty that i mean smudges on the mirrors and there were fingerprints on the doors and the light switches and uh, it looked like the carpet hadn't even been vacuumed i mean it literally looked like a foreclosure and somebody just bolted and scraped everything out and boom here's the i, I was so disappointed that I mean, there was a part of me, Pat's like, don't clean, don't clean. And I'm like, I got a duster out in the car. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to just tidy up a little bit. There are more people coming. They can't see the house in this condition. I mean, I was, there was this violent part of me that's like, you can't have an open house with a dirty house like this. And just, just walking past the China hutch and somebody had like used, you know, they'd done like this with, I don't know, their hand or something. And it was all smeared and filmy. And I, I was just like, no, no, do not let another person in here until I clean this place. It was, it was, it was hideous. And Pat's like, you, you can't imagine that someone would have an open house with this dirty of a house. I'm like, this, this was shameful. I was really, really embarrassed for the realtor. I was embarrassed for the, the, the homeowner. I, I was embarrassed. It was, it was, it was shameful. Oh. I'm glad I got that out of my system. I yeah, that. it's amazing what you see out there. The, you know, people will let you into their home in all states of cleanliness. So, so, but I have to go back to Mary Cook, for example, because in the Mary Cook house, the house was immaculate. It was immaculate. And she asked and Pat told her, oh, she runs a cleaning, whatever. And Mary puts her hands on her hips and she said, inspect this house. <laughs> and I said, I already did. And she said, how did I do? And I said, you you pass with flying colors. She said, I am so specific about every single thing that is done in this house before I show a house. And I was like, go marry. But I mean, she, she thought of everything. She said, I give my homeowners a checklist. She said, I send someone out to inspect the house. She said, if it is not immaculate and I would not eat off the floors, I will not show the house. And I was like, <laughs> go Mary. Go Mary. Yeah, it was awesome. But she's like, I'm so glad you have a realtor in Florida now. Yeah. Inspect this house. I mean, she was just she was very defiant about it. Like, try me. I was like, oh, I, oh, I already did. <laughs> I uh, love which takes me, takes me to my next question. We've got our our time is running out, and I've just had so much fun chatting with you guys. Um, what is the protocol for taking off shoes when you go inside a, a home? Are you supposed to take off shoes, or are you supposed to leave them on, or how does that work for a open house? Booties, disposable booties. I have a basket of the, you know, that that you put over your shoes. Oh, that's a great idea. We use yeah, those in, in house cleaning. Usually provide well. a, a big basket of, of uh, new booties um, for almost every home. Mm -hmm. Just across the board, it's the most respectful thing to do. Mm -hmm. That we don't have to worry about anyone tracking anything. And I will tell you though, you need to watch out. No offense for kiddos and husbands, because they'll walk in the backyard with those booties. And then come back in the house with those tracking oh. leaves and dirt and all kinds of fun stuff. So the purpose of the booties is to keep the floors clean. Oh. <laughs> so so keep an eye out at that back door when they come back in. Yep. <laughs> is it is it wrong to have a little sign out front that says take the booties off or leave a little basket, put your booties here and then when you come back inside, put them back on? It's not I wrong at all, but most people don't pay attention to it. Oh. They're looking at the, the backyard and they're excited about the pool or the landscaping or whatever it is. So we just we just remove all of that for them and just remind them to slip them off before they head out and put them back on when they head back in the house. So cool. most awesome. people have had their floors professionally cleaned. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, it's just easier. If you ask people to remove their shoes, it's it's a lot of effort and work and a lot of people aren't comfortable with that and they're not prepared to do that. So booties across the board is the best option for sure. We usually have a little basket with a sign that says uh, fresh shoe covers with a smiley. Oh, wow. And um, we put it right in the center of the of the entry. So you have to literally walk over the top of it to get it. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a little off center, but you're tripping over it if you walk through that door. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay, cool. All right. One other question. What about taking photos? Let's say that I'm in the villages. I find a house that I think is perfect. Am I allowed to take photos? Do I have to ask to take photos? Is it not allowed? Is it frowned upon? What is the problem? I am super glad you asked this question. Um, we get this a lot. Um, first of all, before we do an open house, we've already talked to the sellers about removing all of those personal items. When people come to the home for an open house, we encourage them to jump on Facebook Live, we encourage them to jump on um, FaceTime with their friends and their family. We encourage them to take videos and photos of the house so that they're gonna remember it. Hey, we know you're out looking at 20 open houses today. You're gonna remember this one if you turn your camera on. And so we mm -hmm. encourage people to walk around. And if you have a whole bunch of people walking around your open house live on Facebook, um, it draws a lot more attention to the open house, by the way. And so uh, we highly encourage people to do that. Um, specifically, the homeowners knowing that and have removed those personal family photos and things like that. Right. Um, I, I love the conversation we've had today, you guys. I'm super excited about this and our time is up. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to add before we close? We'll go with you, Brooke, and then we'll jump over to Erin and Regina. Uh, well, as I said earlier, a lot of people go into open houses or the home buying process and it's uh, they can just fall in love and be emotional. Um, I've got a checklist for open houses um, that I think is going to be available here today. So you can check that out and, and just make sure that you're looking at the house um, with your mind as well as with your heart. And um, I believe Aaron or Regina said it earlier, check the house out at different times of the day and make sure that you're buying a, a home that fits your lifestyle. So uh, I think I think that's it for me. I think I have a link. I'm looking for a link to uh, that uh, freebie that you just offered. And I will add that in the notes here. Awesome. Thank you. And Erin, uh, tell us where people can go and find you. Yeah, absolutely. So I ask Erin Brown um, on basically any social media um, is where you'll be able to find me. So and you're in you're in San Antonio, Texas, right? San Antonio. If you if you Google my name, my phone number should pop up. <laughs> awesome. And Regina, where are you, and how do people find you? I I'm Regina Brown. I'm a realtor here in San Antonio, and Regina Brown at gmail.com. Okay, cool. All right, I wanna make sure that uh, we have information for you guys, so I will leave those in the notes below. And uh, again, I'm Ange Ask Angela Brown on all the social medias as well. So thank you for joining us today. We are going to, I'm thinking next week, I think uh, based on what Regina said, we're gonna uh, show you how to do an open house and give you all the secrets behind actually how to run one from the realtor's perspective. And that would be Bye. so fascinating. I would love to, to learn about that. So I hope you guys invite me back because I wanna be a part of that. And uh, we will see you guys again, same time, same place next week. Until yeah, then, have great a great week. week. Thank Take you. Take care, you guys.